Morning folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School and I'm out here in the woods today at the Pathfinder School to shoot the part two of this staking video. And I have a luggage scale here that I'm going to use to pull stakes out of the ground as we put stakes in different types and different substrates with different setups to see how much pounds of pressure it takes to pull that stake out of the ground to kind of prove some of our theories from yesterday. And again, you know, this stuff is not anything I invented. I learned this stuff. This is new to me, okay? I was doing it wrong for a long time. And I read an article, and I think the guy, the blog was like uh, something hiker. I put it in yesterday's video in the first comment there where I got a lot of this information from. And I also read a couple other articles about staking and, and ways to improvise stakes and ways to circumvent the problems that you get with the torque from guy lines on a stake. And so we're going to talk about some of that today too. I can't remember all of those sites that I looked at and all the research I did, but I did give credit to the guy who I got a lot of the research from on yesterday's video in that pinned comment at the top of the video. If you want to go try and find that article, it's kind of obscure when I went to look for different staking methods, things like that. I kind of just ran across it halfway down the Google page and clicked on it and started reading it. But anyway, we're going to use this scale today. Um, I'm out here in the woods. Like I said, I've got plenty of different types of substrate here at the Pathfinder School that we can test some of these theories on. So I started in an area that we camp quite often with students. So the ground is kind of compact in this area. So we've got some fairly good substrate to work with here. We're going to try a couple different stakes and look at it and see how they compare and also how it compares by angularity of the stake in the ground to the force of pulling against those stakes. Stay with me, guys. Okay, so one thing I wanted to show you real quick in this video, just a little bit of uh, extra knowledge here. This knot is kind of a modified mooring hitch, for lack of a better word, because it really doesn't have a name. But it's a slippery knot that comes out of the line really easily. So instead of having to come around the tree and find a stick or a stake to put in here to lock this against the tree to keep this in place and then pull the stick out later, you just pull that line through, that bite, and then you come around and half hitch it against itself and if you leave that tag sticking out it becomes slippery so it won't come out but if you pull it it pops right out okay so again all you're going to do is come around pull a bite of line through and give yourself a little bit of extra room with that bite come in and put a half hitch in there and make it slippery just like this and collapse it down on top of that just like that okay that locks it in place but Again, it comes undone really easily. So we'll get that put in real quick. And then we'll go to the other side. Okay, so we just have a normal poncho style shelter here at about a 45 degree angle ish. And we got an ABS stake here that's got a stake loop on the end of it. This one's large enough for double staking. We'll talk about that in a minute. But for now, we're gonna take this stake and we're gonna drive it all the way to where this is the only thing sticking out of the ground. That's the proper way to drive a stake is all the way down, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this over one time because we have a long stake loop here and I wanna get this on the ground. We're gonna go double just like this, okay? We're gonna put this in here and we're gonna pull it out tight. So this time I'm gonna bend that stake backwards at 45 degrees and I'm gonna hammer that dude in. Okay, get all the way to the hilt there. All right, down in the dirt you go. There we go. Now, what we have here is we have a scale that's gonna tell us, as we pull on it, how many pounds it takes to get it out of the ground. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and pull from this loop right here on the same angle the tarp is sitting at, all right? Right now I'm at 24 pounds and it's starting to give way at 34 pounds, 43 pounds. So at about 43 pounds, this stake is now ineffective. Now I'm gonna pull it over just a little bit. I'm gonna pound it straight in the ground.
All right. Again, same test. We're going to pull parallel with the tarp here, just like this, and see what we end up with, okay? Right now, I'm at 65 pounds. I wonder if you see that. That's 71 pounds, 73, 74, 76. And I can't get that steak to budge. Cannot get it to budge. All right, we're going to go over to the other corner on the opposite side here. And again, we're going to double this up. And we're going to use a groundhog style steak. This has got less surface area in the ground. But we're going to lock it right in that top notch right there. And we're going to put this one in at a 45 degree angle. All right, got it buried all the way to the steak loop, all right? So there's 45, 50. That's a better steak as far as holding power goes. It took about over 75 to get that thing to come out of the ground. So even though that's a smaller steak, it's got better holding power in this soil than the ABS steak had. However, we could have been in a harder piece of ground, who knows, all right? So let's reset and we'll go straight up and down this time. Okay, now get hooked in again, just like this, reset. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna have to take, I'm gonna take two hands to do this, I can guarantee you that. All right, there's 90 something, and that thing's not even moving. We got this thing maxed out, and it won't move. And one other thing I wanted to show you during this video is you can see I have stake loops in all the corners of this poncho. So if I want to put a guy line on this, it's very simple to do that. I just take that bite, take my guy line, and put a sheet bend in it. So I've got a loop connection there with a sheet bend that will come out when I need it to, but it's going to be good and solid. If I want to get that undone, it's really simple because it's almost like a square knot. You can just break the back of it out, pull it, and it's going to come straight out on you. So if you've got a situation where you've got loops already in your grommet holes, which is always a good thing to do, and you want to attach some type of guy line to that, all you have to do is put a sheet bend in there just like this, which is basically just a half hitch around that loop. And when you cinch it down, it's not going to go anywhere. And all I'm going to do for now on this one is I'm just going to turn a marlin spike hitch in the line, slide a shepherd's hook style stake in there right up to the top. And I'm going to drive that thing in at a 45 degree angle, just like this. And you can see that line trying to ride down that stake, okay? But when we pound that thing in all the way, it's going to be on the hook. I'm going to pound it down to where we just got the hook sticking out of the ground. Give ourselves a little extra line to pull that stake with, okay, when the time comes. The line is at about probably less than 30 degrees of angle, and the stake is at a 45, okay? Okay, turn our scale on here. Again, I apologize. This might be kind of hard for you guys to see. And then we'll hook it in right here. Actually, we'll hook it in this way so it can't come out of there. Like that. And we'll pull at the same angle the tarp is pulling, okay? So we're at, right now on a solid tug, 29 pounds of pressure. 35, 38, 40, 43, 50. And at 65, it's trying to give. But what I got a feeling is happening is the stake is bending. It's not coming out of the ground. Let's go take a look. All right, let's pull the stake out of the ground. Look at that. We bent that shepherd's hook 
over. So being in the ground like this and pulling, what's happened is you have force this direction as well that you're pulling against, but this becomes a pivot point. And when it can no longer give this direction or this direction, it bent the stake. Now that was at a 45 degree angle, but remember that we had a very low angle on our line to begin with. We didn't have a high angle. We had less than 30 degrees. So at less than 30 degrees, you can probably get away with that 45 easy enough. It's when you get higher up that you have to take care of things and get it straight up and down. Now, some of this is making sense from things that I've personally observed, all right? We had this at a 45 degree angle. We bent the stake before the stake gave way and pulled out. And we were at over 50 pounds, like 65 pounds, I think, on the scale when that started to happen. The lower the angle of that guy line, the more you can really get away with as far as the angularity of the stake. The higher the guy line angle is, that's when you have to be cognizant of a lot of things. And I noticed that when we have the gathering and they come and they put up these great big tents at the gathering for us to use for classes, demos, and things like that, they take four or five foot long steel stakes and they drive them straight into the ground with a machine that basically jackhammers them into the ground. Because you have a really high angle coming off the top of those tents down to the stake, they have to get depth. If you have a low angle, you don't have to have as much depth and you don't have to have as much friction from soil to soil or stake to soil because you're basically creating a lever and fulcrum close to the point of contact of the stake to pull it this way. You're not pulling up this direction, you're pulling almost straight across. When you're doing that, this is what you get with an aluminum stake, all right? Now, one of the things that we haven't talked about is what we're talking about right now is sheer force against the stake, sheer pulling force causing stake to stake, stake to soil friction, and soil to soil friction. What we haven't really talked about is what actually happens in a camp on a windy night, unless you get a strong gust that gives you that much pressure all at once, what you generally get is this all night on your lines, okay? Which loosens that stake up in the soil because it's pulling on that thing like a lever. And over time, it loosens your stake to soil connection and it starts to do this. And as it can turn a little bit more because it's pushing soil this direction and giving way underneath because it's loosening up all the time, now it can pull out. So there's ways to circumvent that by using shock absorbers, which is basically bungee cords. So what I've done on this line is, if you carry just a few feet of bungee cord with you in your staking kit, then you can adapt it when you need it. So I've taken about an 18 inch piece of bungee cord here and I've connected it with a sheet bend knot to the end of my guy line. And now I have this going on so that when I get that beating during the night of moderate winds, instead of loosening up my stake, it's just moving this, all right? And the way I've used a connection on the end of this thing is I've used an arbor knot for what it's actually meant for. It's meant to go around something and be under constant tension and not come loose, okay? So you have basically a stop knot on a slip knot, and that's an arbor knot. And so when we pull this on here and we pull it down, it's going to slide down and catch on that stop knot. And because it's under constant pressure, it's not going to come loose. And that's really the purpose of an arbor knot is around an arbor. So we can use this connection, pull it out to where we have some tension on the bungee, but it's not stretched all the way out. But our lines are taut. And then we're going to have that shock absorbing that's going to eliminate a lot of this going on during the night on a static line. The good thing about arbor knots is all you have to do is grab the tag and pull against it and it loosens right up. That's the reason some people put stop knots on the other end of the line to use them for what they call bushcraft zip ties, which is not what an arbor knot was meant for in any way, shape, or form, okay? It was meant to tighten around an object and stay tight until you pull it loose. But if you've got something working against this and this object that it's wrapped around is the one that's moving, then it can loosen up. So you've got to have that constant tension against it to keep it tight. And that's what the bungee cord will do for you, all right? So again, just pull on the tail end and it comes undone. You can open that loop back up and you're ready to use it again the next time. A simple sheet bend connection, will get that on and off very quickly. And again, if we carry a couple, three pieces of extra bungee cord in our kit, we're always gonna have it when we need it. 
And really, that's the thing with staking. What you're gonna see during this video and what I've found is, and what I've also read online, other people do that are experienced in doing a lot of, a lot of camping in different environments. And you know, for me, I've been all over the world, but the majority of what I've done has been in the Eastern Woodlands. So I'm used to that type of environment. People that travel and go in different environments have to deal with different things all the time. And so what I've read is that a lot of them will carry multiple types of stakes. They might only carry eight stakes, but two of them might be longer than the others. Two of them may be screw in stakes. Somewhere where you can put an anchor in that you know is going to be critical in wind or something like that, you can anchor those lines with different stakes. Maybe always carrying at least one type of sand stake that you can use for an earth anchored device or a dead man is going to give you an advantage as well. You can also use that stake I read in another book, uh, I think it was Colin Fletcher's book on walking. I read that he used those sand stakes for a poop shovel. So instead of having to carry a shovel with you all the time to bury your scat in the woods, you can use that stake because it's so wide, that sand stake works for a small shovel. So you've got that and a dead man anchor and a sand stake all built into one thing that you've got in your kit with your other stakes. Whether you're carrying six, eight, 10 stakes, that's up to you and with the shelters that you build and the shelter that you're carrying. But carrying a variety of stakes may be a better answer than carrying all the stakes exactly the same. But you also have to understand what environment you're recreating in and going to to help you decide what's gonna be important as far as your staking needs. Now, as far as improvising goes, if you can't get a stake in the ground for some reason, you can always cut yourself a log or find a rock and you can wrap your line around that and tie it off. Just wrap it around one time, tie it off with a slippery half hitch. And you can guy your tarp out that way and just lay it on the ground and guy your tarp out that way. Or use a rock the same way. Use a bag of rocks the same way. Use your bandana full of stones the same way. You can do all of that and connect it into this line and use that for a guy out point if you have to. Also, if you're in an area where the ground is a little soft and you don't have the proper stakes, you're afraid your stake's gonna pull out, you can put your stake in the ground and you can put a heavy rock right in front of that dude, almost on top of the edge of that stake on the front edge, and that will also keep it from pulling out as easily, okay? The other thing you can do is you can double stake. So you can take one stake and put it in the line, and you can just use a marlin spike hitch for that, put one stake in the line, step back four or five inches, put another marlin spike in the line, and put a second stake in the ground, just like this at the same angle, okay? But double staking can give you a leg up if you need it, if you're in softer ground as well, because it gives you twice the holding power, okay? If you have one longer stake and one shorter stake, I'd use the longer stake in the front as your main stake and the shorter stake as your backup. Okay, so we've moved our setup now to more of a, for lack of a better word, I'm gonna say a floodplain, but it has to be, <laughs> has to be a lot of rain for that to happen. So this is more of a sandy area, kind of between two creeks. So if those creeks rose a ton, it would be a floodplain. But it's a good place to show the ability of these stakes because I know we have sandy soil right here. What I want to do now is take this loop of line and put it through a sand stake one hole down. And I'm just going to use another stake to trap it just like this so it can't come out. And I'm going to pull that back. And I'm going to shove this sand stake in at a fairly upright angle, I'm going at about, I don't know, 20 degrees-ish, okay? My tarp's pretty close to a 45, but I went pretty close to 20 with that all the way to the top. Let's check that out. Okay, here we go. It's gonna take a bunch, I know that. There's 60, 90, we got it maxed out. I'm about ready to break the scale in half, okay? and that stake's not moving. That is the virtue of a sand stake, okay? All right, so let's say we get hung up and all we got are these crappy shepherd hook type stakes and we're in soft soil. What we're gonna have to do is make a dead man. I'm gonna show you how to do that. We're gonna dig a hole, foot and a half deep, foot deep, something like that. Set the soil off to the side and hope we don't hit the water table, being this low to the ground, this low in elevation and uh, we're gonna make a dead man. All right, now I'm gonna take one of my guy lines, one of my utility ropes, already has a loop in the end. I'm gonna take a pile of sticks here and I'm gonna wrap that around, pull it through. 
to give me tension, just like that. I'm gonna put those sticks down in the hole and I'm gonna bury them sideways. That's going to give me, and I'm gonna pack that in really good. That's gonna give me a dead man anchor. from this line. All right, so once we put a sheet bend in this bad boy to connect it like we did before, and we're tight, we can come in here and test this dude out and see what kind of force this takes. And I suspect this is gonna probably come close to breaking this junky scale as well. Okay, there we are in pounds. All right, so here we go. That's 35, 40, 48, 60, 50, 50, 60. Ugh. I'm pulling that thing for everything I got right up to 70. It ain't hardly moving that thing at all, okay? So in an emergency, you don't have the right stakes, you can always do the dead man. All right, so... Let's wrap this up. Let's talk about what we saw today. We'll talk about a couple of do's, don'ts type things real quick. All right. Remember that the lower your tarp angle is, or the lower your guy line angle is, the better off you are. Because you have more shear force against the top of the stake at that point, going this direction, which gives you soil to soil friction here, soil to soil friction here, because you're trying to lever that stake. You're getting lower friction here, probably in higher friction here to begin with, all right? And this is the weakest point. Remember that. That's important, all right? But the lower this is, the more the force is being pulled side to side. And the higher it is, the more the force is being tried to pull upward, okay? So pitch of guy lines, pitch of tarps is important. And it makes a difference on how you drive stakes as well. We looked at all those scenarios today. Now, here's what I would tell you, you know. I saw a question on yesterday's video, what is the best all-around steak? And I'm going to tell you there's probably no such animal as the best all-around steak. If you looked at what we did today, and you look at the results of today, those simple groundhog-style steaks, which are basically I-beam-type construction, a T-construction of metal, that were six inches long, held very, very well. If you get them in an eight inch length, I would say that would probably be one of the more optimum stakes to be using. The V-channel titanium stakes work fine as long as they don't have too many holes in them or they'll bend. You have to be careful with that. Aluminum stakes are only good for soft soil. ABS stakes only good for soft soil. soil. Soft soil, tongue twister there. And then of course sand stakes have a place for sure. There's different types of stakes as well, like dagger stakes, screw in stakes that we didn't talk about too much today. I have some of those steaks as well. They are more of a specialty steak. And what I would tell you is that from what I've read, as I spoke to in this video before, and from what I've seen, you're probably best off to carry, if you're gonna carry six or eight tent steaks, carry four that are the same, and carry four that are two different types. So maybe two sand steaks, two longer steaks, and four of the regular I-beam steaks. Something in that, along those lines, depending on where you're operating, again. That really dictates everything. But a variety of stakes is going to serve you better if you're in an area that you don't know exactly what you're going to run into than one type of stake that may be totally useless to you. Then at least you can take the stakes that, stake out points that have the most chance of failure and you can put the best stakes you have in those locations. That would be my suggestion as far as that goes. And from what I've read, Colin Flesher recommends the same thing. A variety of stakes in your kit most of the time. Okay. So with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know that probably wasn't real good camera angle on that testing device. So kind of have to trust what I was saying. The digital readout, and those things look funny on video to begin with. On top of that, it was jumping around a lot because you can't have a steady force on it. You're kind of tugging like this. So it's jumping around, but I tried to get the highest reading on all of those for you in this video to give you some actual testing of the different angles for the tarps, for the guidelines, for the stakes, 
the different types of stakes, different types of soil, and things like that. I hope you enjoyed some of the tips and tricks that we put in this video for dead men anchors, extensions, things of that nature, and as well as that new ridgeline knot for attaching a ridgeline to a tree. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends, and I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.